In my last film, we looked at this tweet. Uh, my wife has just started working with an autistic girl in reception. One of her targets is to make greater eye contact or, or something along those lines. Is this appropriate? And we explored why the answer is no. Um, but whoever set this target clearly recognised that this little girl's being autistic is significant. It's not just she'll learn to count to 10 or something like that, something that you'd expect to be a part of her education anyway. It's something additional, something relevant to autism. So, OK, it's the wrong something, but you know, it would have been set with the best of intentions. What might a useful target have been? The answer to that will depend on the child. Um, the phrase, if you've met one autistic, you've met one autistic, is very popular. It's helpful to a point. Everyone is individual. Um, curiously, this is more true of autistics than it is of non-autistics. I'll pop a link in the blurb below if you're curious. Um, but we are really past a time when we should need to be saying it. You'd never hear someone say, if you've met one gay person, you've met one gay person, or if you've met one black person, you've met one black person. Because whilst these things are true, there's something about the saying of it that takes away from the shared experience. There is common ground within the gay experience, within the experience of being a person of colour, within the autistic experience, within you know any demographic, there's shared ground. So whilst the answer will depend on the child, there are likely to be some common themes. What I would hope is that settings would set the targets for themselves rather than for the child. Setting it for the child suggests that the child is broken and needs fixing, when the reality is that society is not, not broken per se, because it's full of lovely people like you. It's in need of updating. So targets like she will be supported to play with peers, because as fine as she seems on her own, she'd actually probably quite like some friends. Or she will be supported to recognise external indicators of her own emotion. Because we might think that everyone knows their own emotional landscape, but if you have difficulties with your interception, as many autistic people do, then you might not. Or uh, she will be supported to express difficulties because the communication skills available to her when she talks to you about horses or windmills might not be available to her when it comes to describing emotions. Languages and research has shown that the retrieval of emotional language is, can be particularly difficult for autistic people. There's a condition called elixithemia, which um, means that people are unable to put words to emotions and it affects 10% of the general population, 50% of the autistic population. So it can be extremely useful to have other forms of communication recognised as valid. And I personally once used three laminated hamsters in three laminated hamster wheels to communicate the pain of divorce. So this is, there is common ground here. Um, it could be, she will be supported to discover regulation strategies. We know the strategies that support neurotypical people with their mental health. They're well researched and well documented and some, but not all, may translate for neurodivergent people. But we don't have the same certainty. We don't have the same knowledge base to work from because the research hasn't been done and indeed autistic people have actively been excluded from research into mental health. So we need to discover so how wonderful would it be for that little girl to have somebody open-minded and open-hearted adventure with her and find out what helps her to calm down or helps her to feel safe or helps her to feel happy and then plan that into her day, not trying to force a square peg into a round hole and saying, you know, this is the prescribed way to get happier, to try and turn a cat into a dog. For each of these potential strategies, the person doing the work is the people who support that girl. They'll set up the play scenarios that she can access. They'll support her peers in understanding the difference in communication. They'll help her read her emotional landscape from exterior cues, recognising that she might not be able to do it from the interior cues that they use to recognise their own emotions. And if that one sounds weird, get in touch and I'll, I can tell you more about it. And they'll find the communication system that works for her when she's upset, recognising that many autistic people don't have access to language when emotional or stressed, i.e. 
right when we need to say, this makes me feel sad, that part of our brain switches off. So can you find a way that she could indicate that without words and help her to use it? We all have things we do to cope with stress and upset and she's likely to encounter more than her fair share. So your first job is to try and make sure she doesn't, but you're unlikely to be able to completely protect her. So recognising that neurotypical ways of coping with upset might be different, might be difficult for her, might challenge her, might not be useful to her, and working to discover what works for her is really important. Is it a walk outside? Is it a time to jump up and down? Is it stimming? Is it a certain smell? Is it an activity that she really enjoys? Is it the chance to organise the books in the library? Explore with her and let her be who she is and work to change the world because you are world changers. You really are.